musicians in bars getting beer with no amends. Lacquer Channel, we're right here. And not how are bar. you? Not <laughs> at a bar, not getting beer. <laughs> Just hanging out. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for taking the time to do this. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so yeah, you want to hear about how I started? Yeah. Take so, it? Yeah, let's go right back to as um, far back as you want. So yeah, I was in a band in the 90s um, called Head with uh, Brennan Canning, who's now in uh, Broken Social Scene. And I, uh, I recorded three albums, and uh, I always thought the mastering process was the the best part of it, since it was um, quick, and uh, it, there was it was it seemed like good pay at least at that time, and uh, uh, I like the technology of it. So when I decided my sort of final year of, of the band. I mean, I didn't know it was the final year, but I, I got very interested in mastering. And then uh, at the end of, uh, when I, I, just before I quit the band, I got a full-time job as a mastering engineer in 1997 okay. uh, at a CD manufacturing company. And then in 98, I opened up my own mastering studio. And then um, I moved uh, three times until 2001, where I got a, offer from uh, Metalworks and from Lacquer Channel to come work there. Uh, I chose Lacquer Channel because it seemed the most uh, sort of potential in most disarray. And then in the next uh, five years, I became a uh, part owner. And then five years after that, I became a uh, full owner or maybe maybe longer because it's been, I've been here since 2001. So that's like, 17. yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. You know, and, and we, during that time, we modernized the studios. We took uh, a lot of the old gear and got rid of it and got, like, new gear. And um, I see your old machine old, over there. There's an old, yeah. <laughs> uh, I regret selling some of that old gear, um, but I had to, to modernize, uh -huh. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, if we had more money, I could have kept that, plus buy new gear, but we didn't. Now I'm trying to buy up rebuy up some of that old gear um some of it is like impossible like yeah. like uh there are these Poltec EQs that were um from like the 60s and I sold them for about 7500 US for the pair and now they're about 10,000 US each Jeez. um so I've just recently purchased a a a knockoff version of it from so from the so, UK. So can I ask then, is that to, is that in order to get a retro sound? Or is that just because it's well, because authentic old equipment? Because, yeah, it's that retro sound. It's like the, the more digital things become, the more you want to sort of warm them up and make them sound not older, but like, like you know, combat sort of streaming and MP3, make things as sort of warm and inviting as possible. Yeah. So they're uh, kind of, it's nicer to listen to, even though they're streaming quality, which is pretty low quality, considering, yeah, yeah. you know, based on when you compare CD to streaming quality, CD is much, sure. much higher quality. Right, right. Wow, okay. So we went, ran the gamut of your career in just a few seconds. Yeah, I mean, it's and all it has been, it's all I've been doing for 20 years is, is, is mastering. I mean, I've been, I've, uh, I've, I've had an online business of selling gear and, and you know CDs and stuff like that, but that was more just to fund the the mastering side of it. So, but something really interesting happened in the past little while, and you can talk about other claims of fame. But I was most interested in interviewing all the members of the TMC. Yeah. So how did that start? The Toronto Music Advisory Council. Yeah. It started, uh, I believe, by a group of people who wanted better representation for the music community at City Hall. Um. And they did, and then Music Canada was one of those, and, uh, and I was speaking at that actually, and and then they, the City Hall uh, under Rob Ford at the time agreed to to start the Music Advisory Council, and it continued under under Tory. Um, whether or not it'll continue under the new uh, council is is yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we've okay. done a lot yeah. to advance uh, music. In the city, at least in regards to City Hall, um, as everyone knows, politics moves very, very slowly. So, 
but we have a list of accomplishments, and, and they're and they're pretty pretty big. Anything you're proud of? Um, not personally, like that I've done, because I just sort of contributed to things. I didn't really head anything. Um, but there's a lot of great things that, that that were done as part of the committee, like allow bands in certain zones to load into uh, venues um, in, with, without getting parking tickets. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, also, pilot project to allow uh, um, uh, buses to park. Um, again, without getting tickets. Um, noise bylaws, get them, um, you know, not uh, enforced to the, to, the, to the way of, like, if one person complains, a, a concert gets shut down. Oh, okay. So they, they bring, brought some sensibility to that. And, um, okay. Yeah, there's a few other things. Just, just even the good. fact that music is recognized now at City Hall. They actually play music at City Hall, like bands come and play. That's directly from the music office. And they also have music at um, at Pearson Airport now. Oh, great. That's okay. part of this. Oh, well, that's very interesting. And music on 311 when you call it and you're on hold. Um, it's uh, not that really anyone's going to discover music that way, but the, there's like, I think, 50 acts that are on 311 and they all get paid for it. Oh, that's very interesting. It's not interesting. a lot of money, but uh, maybe a couple hundred bucks, but it's something. Yeah. It's Great. Okay, yeah. so there's some great things that the TMAC did. Um, and do you want to talk about any claims of fame in mastering that you've done? Yeah, you know, mastering is sort of like undercredited. It's mm-hmm. not like we don't we don't need or, or or want credit most of the time. But I mean, personally, because I've I've been close with the broken social scene people, I I've been pretty proud of those records and everything that's come out of that, like Jason Collette and Apostle of Hustle, Stars, and you know all these acts that are associated with and metric and associated with broken social scene, we've, as a studio, have touched them in one way or another. Um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, it, it's really hard to remember what I've worked on because in mastering, you work on a different project almost every day. So I just f- finished working on the new, uh, um, or the, uh, the re-release, sort of a special edition of the Headstones first album. So that was kind of a cool project. I've worked five years? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I've worked on a, 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 a good portion of Hayden's albums, which is great because I went to high school with the guy and oh, was cool. very close to them. So it was, you know, there's no guarantee you were, you're friends with somebody, they're going to work with you. So uh, it was nice that he did for the albums that he did. Same with Broken Social Scene. I haven't, I haven't worked on the past couple albums with Broken Social Scene, but that's, it's, you know, it's not a big deal because a lot of that work was done in the U.S. and when a band gets to a certain level in Canada, they they need or they feel they need to go to the U.S. to get a certain amount of legitimacy, and you know I don't I would never uh, sort of fault them for that. I think it's it's it 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 sort of. Uh, Sort of states, you know, we've we've made it to some degree that you know we don't have to st- don't have to stay local, sure. and I, I appreciate acts that do stay local and a lot do, um, but I, again, I wouldn't fault them. They usually come around anyway. Any new acts you like nowadays? Um, yeah, tons. I, but you know, like I like I said, it's it's so hard to remember. Um, uh, I, I did the new latest uh, Born Ruffians album. I really like that. Um, there's a guy uh, called uh, Ensign, Ensign Broderick who used to be in a band called Blue Peter. Mm-hmm. He's releasing his debut albums basically like, you know, this year he released them and he's like in his 50s. Yeah, that's 20 years after Blue Peter. More even. More. Though they've done a Blue Peter was 80s. Show. Yeah, they've since done Since they probably released show, anything. once or twice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, so, so, and his music's great and he's, he's done a ton, a bunch of albums already. Uh, and he's very prolific, and but his music is really, really fantastic. You know, what's his instrument? What or does he do? He, he's now? keyboards. Okay. But but he plays a lot of it, and he has like, like some really amazing players on okay. on on the album. So, so it's like, like something like, to check out. Yeah. Um, so you worked on that one too? Yeah, I worked on I think all all his albums. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's got an interesting. I'll just I'll just move out of frame for a second, but sure got an interesting package here he's um this is something he self-released he's now on uh, on six shooter can you get that yeah and then so it's like a big thing but then nice. if you o- open it up it's got these 
big albums in there, and then, and then all this, all this artwork, like wow, just beautiful paintings. You know, it's like, um, I think this this album artwork is. That's something that's being released. Something. This was released. This was self released. I don't know if the record label is going to re release it, but it's um, uh, it's a pretty special edition. It's pretty yeah. it's pretty incredible. That's substantial. And the records are 180 gram. They're really they're really great. And it's wow. it's pretty awesome. It's called uh, Ranger. Um, right. But yeah, uh, uh, I, I'm proud of almost. I, it's a weird thing to say, or maybe it's a weird, but it sounds almost political, but I'm proud of everything I've worked on. Like, sure. it's like, um, the only things I'm not proud of are the ones that, like, I've been rejected. And it's like, in a 20-year career, I, I'm lucky enough to only been rejected a few times, but they were, you know, I, I'm not going to mention names, but they were projects I would have liked to have done. It's just, I didn't, what I did didn't resonate with them. And that's, that's fine. Um... I, I could probably, I'm guessing it's about five jobs in my whole 20 year career, of thousands of albums, but hmm. you know, those are the ones that sort of sting a little bit because you wish you could have got, you could have got, got it right, but it just shows that mastering's a, mastering's a process and mastering's an interpretation. It's not, there's no objectivity in mastering. There's a bit of an objectivity in the way you approach mastering and I think that's getting lost a little bit. Um, like all mastering engineers should have sort of something in common. And hey, that's okay. She's right here. The way they work technically, but you know, like the actual interpretation of the music, there's nothing objective about it. You know, you're you're gonna get it or you're not gonna get it, and and sometimes I don't get it, but it's, <laughs> uh, luckily it's rare. So, but yeah, I, everything I've done, everything that's out there, I'm I'm pretty proud of it. Like I pay somebody to like. I almost daily post posts about albums we've worked on. It's not as much promotion. It's just it's just you know peacocking. Mm -hmm. We just want to be like we want to be proud of the stuff we've worked on. Mm -hmm. um, any funny anecdotes from the, the biz? Maybe the road. From the road, like when I was in a band. Man, I don't even know because I was <laughs> I was sober and and and. I didn't do drugs and I didn't have a really good time. Like, like if you're on the road, like, you know, having fun is, is, is important. <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of fun. I treated it like a job and yeah. I think that maybe came through a bit, you know, so I didn't really, um, the only thing about, the only thing that's funny and maybe it's only funny to mastering people is that sometimes you'd be sitting there with a client and, 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 going through different pieces of gear or going through a piece of gear and changing frequencies and trying to decide which is the right frequency or not and agonizing over it and then only to realize that the gear is not even on <laughs> just shows you the the psychological side of it is really strong that uh, that 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 people can be you can be tricked in it because if we're, what we're dealing with is so subtle that you can be really tricked into thinking it's there so hmm. but um, I mean I love what I do it's like it's 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 if if you like gear and you like and you like twiddling knobs like audio engineering is great for it it's just it's a tough industry right now mm -hmm. it's like you know a lot of people are making money with it mm -hmm. it's no different than music there's a very sp smaller percentage than maybe ever that are making a living with it same with audio engineering small smaller than ever we're lucky we've been around 44 years as, as a studio so we're we're surviving and we're and we're doing okay. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'll do twenty years from now. I hope, hopefully, still this. I don't, I don't know what my ears will be like in twenty years. Now I feel like my ears are great right now, mm -hmm. and I get them tested every five, and I'm due soon. Um, but I I feel like I was asking people like to repeat themselves more five years ago than I am now. <laughs> like I feel really dialed in. I feel my. Yeah, that might um, be different. I, th I think staying healthy is really great for your ears. Yeah. So, um, and as I get older, I get healthier. So, um, I think that's just, I mean, I'm still eating a lot of sugar and candy, but <laughs> trying to cut back. Uh, but I've cut out, like, you know, I don't eat ice cream every day. I don't like, you know, I yeah. exercise a lot. And I think that's important for your ears. I don't think, uh, yeah, sure. I think if you let your health go, your, your ears are, ears are going to be one of the first things to go. And you can see it with, sick people 
like people who are like from no fault of their own or sick, whether it's cancer or whatever else, they tend to lose their hearing. Isn't that interesting? And I, I don't know what the correlation is that, but it's. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, if I ever get sick, you know, um, which could happen, uh, my hearing might go. So Just you have to be aware of it all the time. Yeah, no, congestion. Sure, yeah. Something else, I don't know, immune system, perhaps. Maybe your, your hearing's tied into your Stay immune hydrated. system. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, so um, I'm hoping, uh, hoping I got another 20 years in me. And because uh, I love what I do, and now software is making everything smaller. As like yeah. this tape machine over here is the size of my uh, washing machine. Exactly. And I've worked on bigger machines, and in video, I used yeah. to do two inch. Yeah. And uh, and now, so you're you concentrate a lot on software on the latest product or the. Yeah, I'm always like the the whole thing in mastering and audio engineering is uh, plugins, so those are like uh, basically like. Uh, devices that you just basically plug into your software and, mm -hmm. and there's thousands out there so I'm constantly trying to look for new ones that are that are that work in my workflow but I uh, at the same time I, I, I stick to the ones I know really well so is that kind of like the pop music then if you hear a certain sound it might be kind of owned by yep. Lady Gaga or by the weekend and then everybody wants to get their hands on it yep yeah, in a way I mean it's like it's like if you find out that this particular software was used on a uh, on a on a track that's really popular. Then you you tend to sort of gravitate to it. But also, processes too. Multi band compression is something that's being used in pop music these days, and so you, it's rare to master a uh, a pop song without multi band compression. I think anyway. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the world does, but 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 I I I, I talk in certain internet circles, and it seems that. Uh, uh, most people who are mastering pop are pop mastering it with multiband, so, I, so I would do the same. For people that aren't and are thinking about it, do you want to give them the pros? Maybe a few pros of, 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 of getting multiband compression. Oh, multiband compression. Well, that's a too difficult one because multiband okay. is is difficult to use right um, because you have. I mean, it's really technical. Like so, it's like. You have thresholds and ratios and crossovers for each band. You could have unlimited bands in some software. So um, treated, uh, and also you can have parallel. I mean, you know what? I, I say like spend a good couple of years using multiband before you actually use it on anyone's project. Wow. Yeah, I did. Learn it. I did. I, I, it took me a long time to be confident enough to use multiband compression. It's, it is not easy to use well. Very easy to use wrong, and it, it ruins a lot of records. Wow. Yeah. Like I get mixes in all the time, and I'm I'm hearing the multi band on it, you know, because they don't have their their crossover set correctly. So, um, but uh, but yeah, there's like I mean, mastering is EQ and compression. And that's it. Um, it. People will say it's more than that, but really, that's kind of all it is, and even less than the compression. It's really EQ. That's real mastering. It's just. If you can use an EQ really well, if you use one EQ really well and make an album sound as good as possible with it, then, then you're doing your really you're really doing your job. Less is more, always with mastering. But vibe these days is pretty important too. If you get something in that that needs vibe, um, but if you're getting great mixes, you should really just just try to respect the mix. Um, um, a lot of times, people um, you can hear where they were going for and they didn't get it. So your job is to try to get it there, and I think that's why. Like, I, like I'm really acquiring tube gear right now. I really want to have a full arsenal of tube gear um, because every every tube piece sounds sounds different. So it's not just running through tubes on a on through different kinds of tubes and pick which one is the right right one mm -hmm. to be able to put things in and out. And, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else technically you want to uh, advise no, I people think, about? I think Simple. that's 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 good. I just the only thing I would. Lastly, say is that um, I really strongly believe in people listening to uncompressed music, um, data compression. That is, so um, if they can't listen to title, because title is in Canada is twenty bucks a month, it's pretty expensive for the uncompressed version of it. Um, grab some CDs, grab some vinyl, listen to music that's that's uncompressed, and 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 you'll you'll find you in, without understanding completely why you enjoy it a little bit better it's like the difference between watching the you know an hd movie and 
a VHS movie. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it's just you're just enjoyable. Or, you know, it's like it's got a. Uh, I already these are if you want to really just experiment after watching HD forever, go back to VHS and see what it's <laughs> like, and you'll be surprised how difficult it is to watch. Very much so. People yeah. don't realize that that going backwards is really hard. So. Um, Not the same thing with black and white movies, though. They're still good. Yeah, they're still good, but they were. That was, in some respects, the film is the height of technology, right? Mm-hmm. Just like, like it didn't, it does doesn't get really better than film. It doesn't. So like, like um, tape uh, in vinyl are kind of the peaks. I mean, you can get cleaner and clearer, but you can't get it sounding better. Do you know much about this thing Neil Young's doing, the Pono? It's dead. It's dead. already finished? Gone. Mm. Dead. Dead. Completely gone. <laughs> yeah. Completely gone. The website's closed. Everything is, <laughs> it is it's over. Title is the new high res okay. because it's CD quality. You can do HD tracks. That's higher than CD quality. I don't, I don't know if it's necessary. I've got a collection of that stuff I bought years ago. I... I don't even know where it is. I never pour it out. I should. I should. It's it's great to listen to. I should look for that stuff. We get so, back into it. Cool. So uh, it's great. Thanks for having me over. Yeah. Um, Want to come see the studio? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, maybe get a few shots. Yeah, go for and, it. Uh, you can... Uh, um, the, wanna... um, <clears throat> it's a bit messy, but... That's okay. You want to tell us a bit about the uh, websites and things like that? or Social media? You're on lacquerchannel.com. Yeah, lacquer or my name. It's... Kind of easy to find. Sure. I don't. I don't put a lot of stock in that stuff. You know, it's like, it's like I think we get business by people saying we've done a good job. So I don't think we've ever got a single job by somebody just looking at a website and going, "Wow, you guys are great." <laughs> um, actually, well, it's not messy, already. but it's like it's very nice. Here's a seven-inch compilation I did for Plan Plan Parenthood. I'm gonna open it up and show you. I know, it's, I know it's really dark in here, but we can go to the light. Oh, yeah, there's a light. It's, it's like all these seven inches, all for all for Planned Parenthood. And it's like huge artists like um, Churches, Bjork, okay. um, John Legend, Elliot Smith. Like, it's really amazing, amazing mm-hmm. project, project, project to work on, you know? Mm-hmm. Um and there's all my gear, and it's like, and there's, this, you know, my my tube stuff, and I'm waiting on new things, and this thing's out of the way. My life organized. Here. <laughs> more tape machines. There you go. Oh, A nice. little bit more. It's, oh, that's quite nice. Doesn't look as nice in here, but. All right, lacquerchannel.com. Noah Mintz, thanks very much for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. Musicians in Studio, not drinking beer. (laughs) Non-musicians in studio.